Gina DeLuca here. Okay, today I'm testing out a new color for a background for a straight pour. I have Amsterdam Standard Series in Permanent Blue Violet. I have had good luck with the Amsterdam paints in the Standard Series. I did try one in the Expert Series and did not um, have any luck with that. I will try um, other colors in the Expert Series to see if it is that particular line or if it was just that color. The color was indigo, which is very close to Prussian blue. And Prussian blue, I get nothing um, in the several different... Um, uh, I've used several different brands and really just don't get don't get much action cell wise with that so perhaps it was just that particular color um i'm going to continue testing to find out so you don't have to that's why i'm here but so we have the amsterdam and i have for my cell makers i have deco art americana decor scent and animals in pure white and what i have done uh, the way that I mix for a cloud pour, I do 50% of the satin enamel and 50% another color. Whatever that color may be, um, whether it's white or purple, what have you. Uh, but 50% satin enamel, 50% another color. And then I add the Floetrol to that. So... Uh, I do one part paint to two parts Floetrol. Um, if uh, you want to break that down, it would be um, one half part satin enamel, one half part uh, regular paint, and then two parts of the uh, Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned until I get the consistency that I am looking for, which is, I'll show you on a lighter color because that shows up better. This is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears quickly. It's making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. If it's getting thin and then thick again, that means that your consistency is inconsistent and you need to mix some more. But that is what we're working with. This is about a two on my consistency scale, if I did not say that. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute. But if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you the exact paint, brand, color, consistency, the recipe, of course, the technique, all of the things that I can't fit onto a card. Uh, this is the picture of the painting in that video. This box contains a tip for that particular technique and here at the bottom you have the color palette that was used in this painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette or you can build off of those colors. There are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the bonus palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in a cup. I want to make sure that I have enough paints to, uh, for my other paints to react with. Always be sure to double check your consistency You'll notice I've already covered my edges. The reason that I do that is because I use Floetrol and I mix thin, and that combination does not give the greatest coverage on the sides. It can appear kind of thin, and you can get some canvas showing through. So I like to cover it beforehand and just save myself the trouble of having to do it later. Uh, and the reason that we lay down a base coat is because we want the paints to slide around easily 
and evenly. And if you don't lay down a base coat, uh, you know, something has to stick to the canvas first. And if it is not your base coat, it is going to be your puddle that you pour and whatever sticks or whichever part hits the canvas, for, canvas first, that's what's sticking to it. So the edges of your puddle are going to stick to the canvas and then the center of that puddle is going to roll over top of it. Sometimes you can get some really cool things happening on the edges of your puddle and then that won't allow you to keep that. So this helps things to stretch evenly and this gives me the most options regarding my composition. Okay, now I'm going to put some paint in a cup. Again, checking my consistency. The sauce may thicken upon standing. It pays to be uh, diligent about that. Pouring from up high. Allowing it to sink and churn. So that first color, that was half satin enamel, half this shade of purple. This is satin enamel, some titanium white from Liquitex Basics, and just a little drizzle of the purple to make it a very light purple as opposed to just a white. Again, pouring from up high, allowing it to sink and churn. Going to take some of this leftover paint and go over top. Well, that's going to be more than enough paint. I may have overdone it again. All right, I'm gonna pop some of these bubbles in the base coat. torching tip when you torch your canvas don't light the torch right on top of your canvas light it away from your canvas and bring it in that initial blast is hotter than the rest of it and that can end up scorching your painting you don't want that okay I might just do kind of a little spiral action, a gentle spiral action. This is not looking like it's going to sell. It's already kind of feeling like it's not gonna do it. Not all colors work for straight pours. That is why I do this never ending testing. Okay, well, I see some cells popping up. We got a little action going. Might just be slow to rise. It's definitely not the typical 
result that I get when I'm doing the monochromatic straight pours. The cells look a little bit different than usual. getting cells though they're not but they're not bolder cells so typically this technique would give me bolder cells these aren't quite looking like that interesting so I'm gonna keep popping these bubbles What happens here, these satin enamel paints are matte. They dry matte. And the Amsterdam paints dry more glossy. When you put a matte paint with a glossy paint, the matte paint wants to push the glossy paint away, just like in your makeup. If you put on a mattifying uh, foundation, it's pushing the oil away. It's not allowing uh, but this is not oil, it's, but it's basically the same idea. It's a hydrophobic effect. It is pushing it away. So these little tiny cells that pop up when I pop the bubbles, they're coming from the layers underneath. There are bubbles in the layers underneath. And as those bubbles kind of, they start rising, like uh, if you had cake batter, it starts coming up to the top. It's bringing a little bit of that paint with it. So when it brings up the paint that has the satin enamel in it and it's touching that glossier paint, it pushes that paint away and the cells get bigger. But typically I get a lot more blending between these colors, between that um, the medium color purple and the lightest color. I don't usually get this much separation. And that's what gives me the bolder cells. When they blend together, it gives that awesome 3D effect. This is looking more like pearl cells, kind of, just in the way that they uh, are forming. But I am getting cells, so it does indeed react. It's just not having the reaction that uh, I would normally get doing a monochromatic cloud pour. Being patient in a straight pour is your friend. The longer we let this sit and let cells develop, the bigger those cells will be when we stretch them out. I could have stretched this immediately and wound up with a bunch of cells that look exactly like this. But if I let the cells form first and then stretch, then I can really get some cool shapes going in there. And when it is bolder cells, it makes them look even more 3D when you stretch them out. So I like to let it sit, I don't know, five, five to seven minutes really is kind of ideal. Um, but you can decide, you can look at it and decide when you have enough cells that you're ready to stretch. I think I'm just about there. I'll get more cells after I stretch and it sits. This whole thing is going to fill up with cells. So yeah, this paint does work for a straight pour. It's just not giving me bolder cells. Okay. What direction am I heading first?
All right, I'll go my usual direction. I don't know why, it just works out that way. Hmm. I'm just going to freshen up that corner a bit. And again, patience is your friend. If you tilt too quickly, the paint will just roll over top of itself roll over the edges just like you didn't even use a base coat. So patience is a virtue in a straight pour faux show. I'm going to bring the weight of the paint back to center before I change direction. The weight of the paint is going to be where it's moving the fastest. So right now the weight of the paint is about there. And I can use that to push the paint around how I like. Again, I'm going to bring it back to center before I change direction. Patience, patience, patience. It's hard, I know. This is a good exercise in patience. Do have a bit of a dry spot over here, so let me take care of that because it will kind of fight on the sides. Sometimes just going back in and juicing it up a little helps out. Okay, well, I'm still getting a little bit of bolder action here. I got some cool 3D stuff going on. Again, bringing the weight of the paint back to center. If I am using satin enamels, I do not torch after I tilt. Um, that's pretty much the only time I've really had any kind of cracking happen. So I avoid that, but also when you're using Floetrol, um, if you have air bubbles in your paint, it's not going to cause the same kind of issue as if you were using a glossy pouring medium like Liquitex or Golden. Uh, Floetrol dries matte and for some reason the bubbles don't really show up. But if you were to be using just Liquitex pouring medium. You can get bubbles and they end up looking like pits in the paint once it's dried. It's not really an issue. I haven't had an issue. 
Um, so unless I want more cells to pop up, I don't torch my satin enamels after tilting. So right now I'm just adjusting my composition. I kind of want to stretch this purple here to balance this out a little, but also making my focal point uh, using the rule of thirds, kind of putting that where I want it. Okay. I am going to let this sit and I will bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. You can see you got some, got some 3D uh, boulder cell action going on there. Looking good. I would call that a winner as far as uh, getting reaction. Yes, indeed. But there it is. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like, share, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, please make sure you have clicked that bell so you are receiving notifications of my new uploads. Um, of the small amount of views that my videos are now getting, less than 1% of them are from subscribers. Something horrible is going on. And uh, the only thing I can think is that people aren't being notified. So um, please make sure you click that bell. Uh, do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Uh, you can also find the links uh, to and coupon codes for my affiliates, Deco Art being one of them. Grab yourself some of these paints and also Fluid Art Company where I got the Amsterdam paints. And... Also, some other affiliates, Amazon and what have you. You can find them all in the description box below. You will also find the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. I see a face right there. That was a face. Now it's less of a face. <laughs> uh, but yes, I will be putting uh, some pieces up on the website very, very soon probably this evening. Um, so you can check out some new pieces there. It's probably been like four or five years since I put anything new up there. I'm very naughty. Uh, swimming, and I mean swimming, in <laughs> paintings here. Lots of inventory. Um, so yes, do check that out as well. Also, uh, and last but certainly not least, um, you will find a link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. Okay. Well, that is it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>